have a look and welcome to another video. In this video I'm looking at question 5 of the 2019 paper, paper 1, Edexcel IGCSC. Uh, for previous papers for questions 1 to 4, please see other videos in this playlist. I've just about covered, when I've finished this, I've covered the whole of paper 1. So I hope this has been useful. Let's go into question 5, 5a. James teaches in a school that uses a local area network and a wide area network. Give one example of a wide area network. The only thing you ever need to write one of these questions, the only thing, and the best example of a wide area network is the internet. Do not write, though, World Wide Web. World Wide Web and the internet are very different. The internet is the network, the World Wide Web are the pages. 5B. Some learners have accessibility needs. Complete the table to describe our two peripherals. Devices designed specifically for accessibility could improve the learning of people with accessibility needs. So what I need to write here is my peripheral and say how it supports accessibility needs. So the first thing I've got written down is a braille keyboard. And what does that do? That allows users with visual impairments to type. Note the word visual words visual impairments there. I'm not said blind. It could be people who have not blind, but they have visual impairments and they do need the braille keyboard. The second peripheral I've got is a reading pen. And what does that do? It allows users with dyslexia to read text more easily. Just a little exam tip here. Um, if you write stuff like generic stuff like a computer and you explain that that isn't going to gain any marks so you need to avoid things like say microphone speakers and not not really explaining that because it's too generic and it's not going to gain you any marks for that so i've got four marks here two specific things specific peripherals listed it's a four mark question describe two benefits to teachers of using a local area network now, what I've written there is can share files with students, share resources with other colleague, colleagues and pupils. So having that local area network, I can share my PowerPoints, share different files, I can collect files in from students, and I can share stuff with other colleagues as well. Point two, I can communicate via email with the lab. So having that local area network, that network within the school, allows me to communicate. I could also write to share, can share Resources like printers as well. You can have centralised backup of files so students don't get into a position where they lose their work. It's all backed up centrally. It's another advantage that you can have there as well. Now into question D, D. You're looking at backup procedures. Backup is where you back up files. You save them on, save them on a tape drive so that if something happens to something, if something happens to the servers, the files are backed up and you can access them again. So one of the type of back one type of backup procedure in the school could use is incremental backup. That's where you the different changes every day are backed up rather than necessarily the whole thing. Let's take one of the backup procedures the school could use to store to secure its data. You could have a full backup, have a partial backup. Grandfather file the sum while you're overwriting tapes. Um, so loads of different things you can write there. This next question is explain the purpose of an acceptable use policy. Now, an exam tip here is that a lot of students um, didn't actually understand this in the previous exam exam series. And they wrote about data protection, copyright, misuse of equipment, anything like that. that. That isn't an acceptable use policy. An acceptable use policy is where you, you have a set of rules for using the internet, using the network, particularly um, at school, for example. And if you break those rules, then you're likely to be banned from the network. So an acceptable use policy is, is you agreeing to a set of rules and consequences if you break those rules. 
So for one mark there, is to, what it is it? It's to provide a set of rules for using the internet. You see that word rules in there. So it provides the consequences, another mark, for users if they behave inappropriately. That's three marks. Question F. The learners use communication software. Describe the purpose of the communication software. Some students fail to gain marks in this. So an exam tip here is some students fail to gain marks in this question because they used to communicate as a verb in their response. Or they talked about sharing files or sharing information. It isn't, it isn't that. Communication software is software created to enable the exchange of sharing or sending of information or files or messages. You can have audio or video. It's the sharing of that information. This question, 5G, is the impact of VLEs on learners. And students have failed to gain, gain marks. So exam tape. Students have failed to gain mar marks with this because... They didn't look about the impact. They didn't write about the impact. They wrote about simply about the VLE, not its impact. Here are some impacts. And look at this. I've got positives and negatives there. So some positives. Very good to work 24 7 365 days. Could also be a negative because it could impact on people's time outside of work, less downtime. Maybe people are expected to work more frequently, more often, and to be available all the time now. So that's also positive, but it could also be negative. Can personalised learning, can organised learning. There's loads of stuff there that you can read through, you can have a look at. Some negatives. Reduced teacher face to face contact, so cannot ask clarifications easily. Collaborative tools are not as personal as face to face. We're looking at things here, virtual learning environments. I've talked about these before, but they're things like Moodle, maybe use Microsoft Teams. They're all virtual learning environments where you can share resources and you can submit resources, etc. Um, some discussion there on the digital divide. Some people simply don't have don't have internet at home, so cannot cannot access this stuff, cannot use this stuff. So there is a bit of digital divide. It's not, cannot always assume that everyone has the same access to the internet. It's not always possible. So another, looking at the moderator's report, negative aspects focused on health and safety usage in computers in general. One common misconception was reference to virtual reality and simulations. I'm not quite sure where, where that came from, but it's not we're looking at learners here. We're not really looking at simulations. I mean, I, I don't know of situations where that, shoot, that, that isn't particularly common. We're just looking at share, the sharing of resources, the sharing of files, um, and students being able to access it any time of work, any time of day they want. So they can be at home. Uh, they could have had a day off ill from school. They can still access... PowerPoint for that day or the resources for that day because the teacher had put it up on the VLE. Um, the teacher can also check when students' work has been submitted and put timestamps on that. And it really makes learning much more interactive and engage with it much more. You're watching this video on YouTube and that's, there's an example of using technology there and me being able to walk you through this question but I may not make you face to face, but I can walk you through this question. There's real advantages there to that. I'm a big, big fan of this kind of stuff. So hopefully it's, it's more engaging and I can reach people. For example, I could embed this video on a VLA and I could reach my students outside of lesson time. So when they come to write for their mocks, they've got they've got revision materials, they can they can have me talking them through a past paper, and they can pause it, they can play it again, any time they want. So we've got sort of more engagement there, and we've got students can use it any time they want. So 
To get eight marks, you need a mixture of both, both, sorry, both, both positives and negatives there, and you need to look at the impact. So if you look at this list to answer this question, we've got the impacts. Here. So to gain eight marks, you need to have some of these impacts. It's not just describing what it is; it's the actual impact on learning. So, I hope this video has been useful. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below. Please, please like it. Subscribe if you can, if you haven't already. And um, thank you very much for watching.